Uh, I'm a methodology person. I'm sort of of the same uh, ilk as Ozzy, basically. And uh, so this is something that's kind of near, to dear, near and dear to my heart. It's what I do most of my uh, research in, sort of methodological issues related to, uh, to missing data. And so there's a sort of a lot of stuff uh, you could talk about. But I wanted to give just a, a sort of a brief overview of uh, a few different things today. So I want to sort of give like the basically the theoretical background behind uh, missing data stuff and sort of describe some of the, the real common methods that you'll probably, maybe you have been using them or you've seen, uh, certainly seen other people use in uh, published research articles and, and definitely you'll see them in uh, software packages that uh, you probably use routinely and talk about sort of why these traditional methods, sort of when they fail and and talk about why they fail. There's some really good reasons why they don't necessarily give you great answers. And then I want to talk about uh, there's really two methods that uh, I think the methodological literature would sort of describe as the state of the art uh, missing data approaches. One being maximum likelihood estimation and the other uh, being multiple imputation. And these approaches, they have a pretty long history actually, sort of dating back to. Uh, really the 70s, but it wasn't until uh, sort of the late 90s really and into the, you know, the last decade that these methods became routinely available in software packages. So the ideas have been around for a long time, but really sort of the, the computer hardware wasn't really there to, to pull off these uh, approaches. And now you can, uh, almost every software package that you might uh, come across has uh, some missing data handling uh, routine in it. And so, uh, Ozzy mentioned that many of you probably use SPSS in your own research. And so I'm going to focus on multiple imputation. This is something that was sort of recently implemented in SPSS. So just sort of walk you through an example to give you some idea about how simple it is to sort of uh, implement these, uh, these newer approaches, really. So um, as Ozzy uh, said, I had a book uh, just come out. This has been the bane of my existence for the last three years, and so I'm happy to have it over. It's caused a couple of girlfriends to break up with me, lots of gray hair to grow. <laughs> had some unintended negative consequences in my life, but it's now over and done and out. And so there's a lot of data sets and uh, example uh, programs up on uh, this website. I'm going to also post the uh, PowerPoint slides uh, from this talk and the data set that I'm using from this talk uh, up on the website uh, as well. So you can download, uh, um, download it if you want. And one thing about the missing data literature, it's really sort of entrenched in like the mathematical statistics uh, type journals, and if there's anything that it's not, it's it's applied. It's uh, really difficult stuff to read, and so I think part of what I was trying to do here is really just kind of translate stuff that's been around for a long time into plain English that uh, you know substantive researchers could sort of wrap their brain around. And so, in the spirit of that, this talk is going to be pretty non-technical. Uh, as well. Some of the stat folks in the audience will probably recognize that I'm telling some, some fibs basically along the way to sort of uh, leaving out a lot of the, the math details, maybe not getting super precise about uh, some of the math stuff, but really just trying to get across sort of the conceptual uh, ideas behind, uh, behind missing data stuff. And here's the final story then. You get a set of estimates that, you know, if you didn't tell the reader otherwise, you'd never know that you had missing data. Because these are just average estimates. These are standard errors that sort of average across all of those 20 data sets. You get a t-statistic. You get uh, probability values, just like uh, normal. And so from a substantive standpoint, like I said, like telling the story about your data is no different when you've got missing data uh, as it is when you've got complete data. So for example, this estimate right here, 0 0.458, that's uh, the, um, the coefficient for psychological well-being. 
you interpret in the usual way. You say, okay, if we held job satisfaction constant, mm -hmm. a one point increase in uh, psychological well-being should on average uh, improve job performance by almost a half a point or so. So the substantive story is exactly the same. We just sort of took a, a roundabout way um, of getting uh, the estimate. And so just real quickly in the last couple of seconds, I just want to show you what the SPSS printout looks like. Many of you have probably seen an SPSS regression printout before. And it's sort of uh, this printout is uh, like 20 some pages long because what it does, like I asked for descriptive statistics and correlations, what it does is it spits out the estimates for each data set. So here are the correlations for data set 19. Here are the correlations for data set 20. And then here's what we're really after. There's a section that says pooled. So these are the average correlations. And you get p-values, the ends are 480. It does the same thing with uh, the means. And then it gives you the R squares one by one for each data set, the ANOVA tables one by one, the regression coefficients. Oops, where did they go? It's over at the bottom here. You get a table of regression coefficients one by one. And uh, again, at the very bottom, I don't really know if you can even suppress this, but at the very bottom, this is what you end up getting are the pooled estimates. It does this automatically. Uh, for you. So this is where I got uh, those estimates um, in the printout. Now, the thing is with SPSS that's highly annoying is that it'll fill in the data for you, but you actually have to buy the missing data add-on to get it to do the pooling. With the standard version of SPSS, what it'll do is just spit out the output. It'll analyze the data sets one by one, but it won't average them, average the estimates. You'd have to do that by hand. But if you have the missing values add-on, it'll always give you those pooled uh, parameter values. So if you want to do a t-test, it'll give you a t-test by data set, and then it'll pull them all together for you. If you want to do most of the things that we do on a routine uh, basis, it'll do for you. And it's really, really very seamless. Sounds like a lot of work, but it's it takes just a few extra seconds to do this as opposed to, takes just a few seconds to do the right thing as opposed to doing the, uh, the wrong thing. <laughs>